Darren here, bestautodetailingtips.com. This video is dedicated to Russell Johnson. He just got a new Makita buffer. Uh, so what I want to address, because he had some problems with sling. So how do you apply the right amount of compound or polish and uh, prevent it from slinging everywhere? So I know there's these cool little uh, YouTube videos. In fact, let me pan in. I'll give you a little uh, context. I'm working on a Cadillac. As you can see all the cars out there in the back, uh, background, I'm working at a dealer. And there's a heads up for you guys trying to get into the business. You ask, well, what can I do? It's called networking. You go to garages, you go to service shops, you go uh, tire shops, you network, you introduce yourself, you let people know, hey, I'm working this area. I'm a detailer, uh, whatever your, what I call your unique value proposition is, is you, you tell that to the, the people. Uh, for me, it's the whole package. I'm reliable, I do what I say I'm gonna do, and I've got plenty of years of experience. Uh, in my area, here in California, the industry is saturated with flaky detailers. So that's the good news for me because I'm not a flake, and so people realize you get what you pay for, and they're willing to pay for someone that they can count on. So back to point on hand. I'm working on a Cadillac. Uh, it's a four-door sedan. It's gold in color. The dealer, he's a wholesaler, retailer. So he buys cars from the auction, um, and then he has to detail them. I do not do dealer work as a rule because they basically want everything for nothing. So uh, that's the rule. There's always exceptions. So this guy wants some scratches uh, buffed out of the car and he's willing to pay a hundred bucks. Now can I do it in an hour and a half? Because normally I charge a hundred bucks an hour to do this type of work. I'm willing to uh, you know, sell it for wholesale. So I've got basically an hour and a half. How do I cut to the chase? Well, that's a whole nother can of worms. I just want to uh, illustrate two points. A is I've sanded, and you can see the line of demarcation. From here forward, I have sanded with an orbital buffer and the sanding disc with first 2,000, 2,000 grit, and then 3,000 grit. Up here, I have left alone because the scratches were uh, confined to this area. You'll notice that I have two types of tape. That's something that's also come up in a video, which I will address specifically is how do you tape a car off? And, and, I'll, and I'll answer this question because this is where society, we as people have been trained to oversimplify everything. We want what we want and we want it yesterday or we want it now. And just cut to the chase, just give me what I want. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. So what I'm getting at is that any guy can color sand or wet sand a flat panel. Very few guys have the self-discipline and the patience to actually do it right. And what do I mean by right is it's easy to get a flat panel right, but how do you protect an edge or a character line from getting burnt? How do you protect the seams from cramming a bunch of compound or polish into the seams so now when the guy's done, it's like, oh yeah, I just color sanded this whole car in three hours, but there's so much polish crammed in every emblem, every seam, every nook and cranny, that now another detailer like myself has to come in after the fact and spend another three hours cleaning up after the knuckleheads uh, first attempt, which yeah, he color sanded it, but there's so much more to it than that. Very few guys, and it's the same with detailing, very few guys have the discipline to actually do it the right way. Uh, so it's one thing to build a shampoo, a section of carpeting, or seat, or whatever, but discipline and patience is required to do it correctly. And that's how you can get paid the bigger bucks. So you'll notice two types of tape. This is Scotch brand, and I'll see if I can uh, if there's any links on my site if you want to get some. I have to buy this at a specialty auto body supply place. It's far more adhesive than this painter's tape. This you can get it like any hardware store. You can get it at Target probably and even Walmart because it's typically called painter's tape. 
99% of the time, this will suffice. It comes in different widths. You'll notice up at the windshield that I have, uh, and you may not be able to tell exactly, but I have like three quarter inch tape covering the windshield wipers because even as careful as I can get, which I am very careful because I don't want to spend a bunch of time cleaning up after myself, is you will still get some splatter up in the windshield wipers or blades. There's a lot of detailed areas or intricate areas, uh, surfaces that will be very time consuming to clean off because when I'm done, I wanna walk away here having removed the scratches, but looking as though the car was never polished on, meaning there's no traces left behind of splatter of any kind. So I tape those off. If I was polishing the whole hood, I would also tape off the little water sprayers. So I've got this specialty tape, this green stuff, which is far more adhesive than the blue tape, and it's very thin because there's a, there's a little ridge on the uh, middle of this hood. Because I sand it over that ridge, I'm just going to buff the sanding marks away, and then at the very end, I'll just very quickly hit this ridge and blend it in. Because if I sit here and tool on that ridge, I know that the ridge is far more vulnerable and prone to being burnt uh, than anywhere else, than a flat edge. Because once there's a, a high point on the paint, like this, the friction that is generated by your buffer is exponentially compounded. So therefore you have to tape it up for protection. It's like practicing safe sex. This is called practicing safe buffing or safe paint correction. So the blue tape is merely to protect the seam. Uh, A, protect the hood, because I only sanded the hood itself. I did not sand the fender. So I lined it up within a sixteenth of an inch, just enough to get it to stick on the hood, because I want to polish up to that seam. So it's there for protection from burning an edge. It's also there to keep from compound or polish from getting crammed into this engine bay area. Also tape is very stretched, or some tape, like this tape can be stretched a little bit. Uh, so you can kind of mold it around corners. This, because it's so thin and it's a different type of tape, it can be stretched dramatically and it's the type of tape that they use for the old school pinstriping. So I can really stretch this uh, before it breaks, and uh, which is very useful uh, when you're working or trying to tape off um, seams or character lines that aren't perfectly straight. You know, they may dip down or curve. Anyhow, so I'm going to now demonstrate uh, just how to just how to polish. I'll show you that. But really, I just want to demonstrate a couple of nuances of polishing. Uh, first one is, is most guys will, will tend to use too much polish. As a rule, and what I'm using today is two Minzerna products. I'm a big fan of Meguiar's 105 and 205. I've become a bigger fan of these Minzerna products. There will be a link on my site um, if you want to cut to the chase. I know polishing and paint correction. Everyone wants to learn it. Uh, and here's a little secret. As a professional detailer that is more interested in being as profitable as possible, I actually do everything I can to get out of polishing because the rude reality is that I make more money by not polishing cars rather than doing high-end correction work because there's so much to get it right and most guys will underbid it and most customers will go into sticker shock when they hear the price to do it right, if you even can do it right. So I do it as little as possible. How's that for irony? Anyhow, so I'm using two Minzerna products. This is not a black car. Swirl marks are not gonna be a huge concern for me. The dealer just wants to pay a hundred bucks, uh, so that's, I have to uh, remain profitable for myself, deliver him a uh, quality service, but it's still gotta be appropriate and relative what he's willing to pay because he's got a customer to answer to. 
So I'm going to use a high performance compound and then a superior performance polish. One is a FG400, one is a SF4000. First, it's like sanding wood. You start out with the most aggressive and you work down to the least aggressive. So I've got my high speed buffer and it's a DeWalt. This is a workhorse, I highly recommend it. If I had to pick two buffers as my first choice for high speed or rotary buffers, it would be the DeWalt or the Makita. I'm, I'm yelling, I don't know how this is gonna show up on video because I'm working right next to a motorcycle shop. There's a lot going on and I want you guys to be able to hear this. So this pad, because I'm trying to cut to the chase, I'm not gonna use my pad washer. I'm a huge fan of the pad washer, but once again, I gotta remain profitable so I can cut to the chase. This is how much uh, product I'm using to start with. I have not polished this at all yet. This is how much product I'm using. As a rule, most manufacturers recommend you just put it in the middle. They'll either talk about a quarter size section right in the middle, but this pad, if I literally put it in the middle, it would go straight down into the uh, the uh, spindle. So I don't want to do that. I just simply put around there. As this spins, it will work the polish to the outer edges. Now, I don't do the old line method where I put a line and I polish into it. I know it looks cool. It looks fancy. All I do is put this straight on the, the uh, panel and turn it on. Now look at this. This is on a flat panel. I can literally do this with one hand. It's set at 1400 RPM. Okay, but could I do this on a or I'm sorry, on a vertical panel? Of course not. But because it's maintaining perfectly flat, I can literally do this with one hand. I'm not putting any pressure on it, but that's just to demonstrate that a buffer really can be easy to use. But with that said, the second you tilt the angle, it's going to start um, friction. Resistance will be created on the edge based on which way you tilt this. So therefore, I need to use two hands to apply some pressure. If I had to guess, I'd be applying about 10 pounds of pressure on this particular car. Now like everything else in detailing, there's so many variables involved. Am I working in the sun? Am I working in the shade? Not all polishes respond the same. Some stay a little wetter than others. So there's really so many nuances to polishing. Probably 80% of it can be taught. Uh, but every time you change polish, every time you change pads, every time you change speed, the color of the paint, everything will have its own ripple effect. So once again, is we want to oversimplify things, and I know you guys out there, it's we're so enamored, we're so seduced by the idea of paint correction and polishing, that's what everyone wants to learn. Well, the irony is that I do it as little as possible because I know that unless I was running a high-end shop, which yeah, that would be a different world, but I'm not. I always make detailing work for me and therefore I remain mobile, I keep my overhead down, but I keep my profit margin way up. At a minimum, I'm charging 50 bucks an hour. At a maximum, I'm charging 125 an hour. Okay, yes, I'm in California, the standard of living is very expensive here, so it's relative, but that's pretty good money. Anyhow, I'm not gonna tell you how much I make in a year uh, because I don't want to sound like I'm boasting and I don't want to discourage you guys. It's the last thing I want to do is discourage you. I mean, you've got to think about it. It's taken me 25 plus years to get here, okay? But what I can do for you is compress that time 
so that you can get to like 90% of where I'm at in let's say five years. And you can get to like 60% of where I'm at in like two years or one year. So that's, that's the nature. All this whole internet stuff, none of that existed before I was in the business. So you guys have it so much easier and you just probably have no ability to fully appreciate that. So since I'm not using the pad washer, I'm using what's called a spur. You can literally use a screwdriver to clean this. What you want to do is you want to break up. I'm going to use my knee and I'm not touching the car. All you want to do is break up the, the spent polish and keep the fibers separate so they can do their job. You could use a screwdriver. If you're a body shop, a lot of them use compressed air uh, blown through a really tight nozzle and they'll blow it out as they're spinning it. To me, the pad washer, there's nothing better than that because it actually seasons this with a little bit of water. And it's, to me, the true winning combination. So I'm gonna do a little more polishing. I'm starting out with the most aggressive wool pad and polish first and then I'm gonna work down from there. Now that I've, only I've, now that I've already done one pass and I have a little bit of polish on my pad already, each subsequent time will require less and less polish. I put the cord over my shoulder so it's not dragging across the paint. The idea is to keep it as flat as possible. And as a rule, I keep it into a two by two section. Now whether that's truly two feet by two feet doesn't really matter, does it? You get the point and I'm gonna do a little bit of overlap each time so that each area is blended in perfectly before I move on to a different polish and a different pad. So I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna take this off and show you that part uh, because that is a critical part. Something that I hope you are noticing is that I can polish right over this tape and it still sticks. That, there's a lot of bad information out there um, and there's not a shortage of people that are willing to uh, regurgitate and repeat bad, misinformed, or unverified information just so they can sound like they know what they're talking about. That is a pet peeve of mine and it drives me crazy. So when it comes to color sanding and wet sanding, a lot of people are just misinformed uh, at best or completely ignorant at worst, but yet they'll give you that opinion. The point I'm trying to illustrate is that polishing will not change the texture of the paint. So if there's orange peel, and that just simply means that the paint has the texture of an orange peel. It's kind of bumpy, it's not flat. To truly flatten paint out and to polish it to glass so it looks like a mirror and looks what they call the wet look, you have to flatten it out first through sanding paper. A buffer will not do that. All it will do is retain the texture, whether it's a scratch, orange peel, or a piece of tape, it's just gonna buff over it for the most part. Yes, it will remove certain things, like if I tried, I could probably get this to heat up enough and start lifting up the edge of the tape, but I'm not trying to do that because that's not my goal. My point is, is I'm just illustrating that if you have like, let's say a, a piece of bee pollen on the paint or a sap or something and you think you're just gonna buff it right off, yeah, if you, if you put this up, if you tilt this up on an edge and you wanna burn through the clear coat, yeah, eventually it's gonna wear that down. But for the most part, it's just gonna polish right over it. Hence, this is why tape works, is it protects the area, but it remains intact. So let me cut, I'm gonna finish this hood, and then I'll bring you back uh, for the very last end of it.